match day nine recap hello everybody this is a question from the africans giving you a concacaf match day nine recap for world cup qualifiers for the 2022 world cup in qatar uh, don't forget to leave a like give us a comment let me know who you think really stood out in this window this game specifically and let's go into these games so as you know Ghanaian canadian here so let's talk about canada um, I think the most stressful match we had going to Central America. How would we do? And I think we passed this. 2-0 the score. An own goal in the 10th minute. And Jonathan David. Jonathan David, lui, un joueur exceptionnel, came in with a beautiful goal later on. Let's talk a little bit about players who stood out. I think it's fair, and I, I think I have a few here to get into. But let's talk about players I feel really set up. First of all, Tejan Buchanan. I think it's a player we've seen grow since the beginning of 2021. I almost said 2011. Wow. I haven't slept much. Tejan has matured throughout this World Cup qualifying process. Um, he's definitely a player who would definitely, the opponents knew, they would try to run through him, get him off his game give him those nudges, those shoves, those fouls to get him to react, get him a yellow. And against El Salvador, they got him, which caused him to have to get that second yellow against Mexico. But I think we've seen this player really mature and continue to grow since the beginning of 2021. Um, his speed down the flanks, um, his just confidence on the ball, and just knowing how to really relieve pressure, you saw that when El, El Salvador, when Honduras had that stretch, that seven minute stretch from about the uh, 64th minute up until the Jonathan David goal, where they were just battering and he was able to take some time just to relieve some stress, stretch out the game a bit, get players and others up the pitch. You really see that. I and mean, I think he, that composure, um, I'm really excited to see him at Club Brugge up in Belgium, the Jupiler League, and I think, man, the skies may not be the limit for him, but he's going to be an exceptional player as he continues to grow. Speaking of composed, I think it's fair to say, if you followed this national program for a while, there's, I think, for me, a player I forgot and I lost my appreciation for up until he started today, but man, Samuel Piet. Un milieu central défensif. Un joueur que je crois il serait... Oh, man. I apologize. Like, I go from French and English with this, so... In translation. He's a player, a CDM, who... I mean, you saw his grit. You saw his tenacity and how he played. He really was able to shut down a lot in that midfield for the time he played up until he was injured. And, man... I forgot how much I appreciate Sam Piet, but yeah, he has a role. And with three more trips to Central America, I mean, speedy recovery, we hope. But he's going to get some time. He's definitely going to get some time. And I look forward to seeing him play in that middle, really to give him the opportunity. Also, I think they just look better in red. I'll just say it. They look good in red. But Canada, man, Sam Piet, a player that who really forgot how much you appreciated him until this game. Looking forward to that. Liam Fraser, who had to replace Sam when he left. You saw him grow into the game as it went. I mean, his he got a yellow, which is honestly, it would be CONCACAF for that to get a yellow. But then everything else not to get anything. I mean, we had VAR and <laughs> I think I said... And this is true. The air in CONCACAF is this. If you give a terrible chef a five-star kitchen, do they all of a sudden become a five-star chef? No. Um, VAR is good for people who can... It really just accentuates who you are as a ref, in my opinion. You either are better at it or you aren't. I could be wrong on that, but I mean, for CONCACAF, I'm not the biggest fan of VAR. But again, I'm not the fan of VAR in CONCACAF because it's coming in this late. I like VAR. But I don't like it as coming in late. But enough about the air. Liam Frazier. Played well. Really grew into the game. Um, able to cut off angles defensively. That pairing with him and Atiba. We were a little bit nervous at the beginning. But he really grew in. And honestly. That pass. That pass. Exceptional. We'll get to Jonathan. 
David a little bit later. Milan Borjan, honestly, he played well. Those two crucial saves where he is able to keep Canada up and shut the door on Honduras trying as they were building exceptional play between him and Crepeau. I mean, I think we're good for goalies for at least the next this cycle and getting into a little bit later. He will retire at some point, but man, if this is how we send him off towards retirement, this is great. I love him and his tactical. <laughs> I, that's also a funny thing. When you watch Canada play other teams and you listen to their other feeds and their other commentaries, the tactical injuries that he takes, um, it's comical listening to people like, we don't get it. What's going on? Every Canadian is just like, oh, we get it. Yeah, we we need to calm down, settle down, figure this out. Well done. But well done. Speaking of tactical choices and the dark arts of CONCACAF, Alistair Johnston. Do we need to say anything else? Alistair Johnston is the person. Alistair Johnston is, I'll use a wrestling analogy here. He's the wrestler who gets it but also is a great performer and can put up a great match as well. Terrible analogy, I know, and I didn't even give you a name, but he's someone who just can relate to the crowd, but then also was good. He's not just a great promo, he's a great wrestler too. And his positioning, how he's able to get away with things, he's, he's almost that cheeky heel that you hate, but he's like, but you do it so well. I love it. Man, Alistair Johnson last year is part of a thing that we've almost forgotten about with this national program, which is the growth of the center backs, that depth. We entered 2021 really concerned about what the defense would give us. And, I mean, let's talk about Scott Kennedy. People forget, I mean, it's only been a year, but at the beginning of last year, Scott Kennedy was the answer that we found who was going to be that last piece to solidify our back three. And then Kamal Miller happened. And then Kamal Miller came, and he was the answer. His neck gave us depth. We could rotate. It was incredible. But Scott Kennedy, who's playing in form right now, I mean, that was your reminder to say, hey, he's still a quality player. His defending, aerials, positioning, everything, you loved it. But Scott Kennedy is definitely someone you're happy with. And now look at the depth at center back between Kennedy, Johnston, Victoria, Cornelius, who was playing better, Daniel Henry. I mean, honestly, plus you look at the depth coming up, whether that be a Waterman, whether that be other players playing, basically CF Impact or CF the Footman. I don't know what they're called anymore. The Montreal MLS team, that squad basically has all our center backs. All our center backs are in Montreal, which is fine. <laughs> this is good. But I mean, look at the depth that it's come up with. It's great. Which leads us to, I mean, the player that we'll be talking about with this match. Jonathan David. Jonathan David, bravo, monsieur, bravo. Man, Jonathan David. I think the thing that will go unnoticed with this match, outside of that wonderful goal, is he got involved early and he was moving around. I'm not sure if Herman gave him the green light to move him around and be involved, but you saw him dropping to the wing. You saw him drop more centrally to get touches on the ball, get involved with that game. And it showed once we got that second half, I think before the goal, he had two or three chances that he could have put away that he failed. One when he went one on three and couldn't chip it over the goalie. Lopez with a great save, or when they were playing it down at a Kubi to Laren to David, who missed it left, that could have been a great moment. And we thought maybe well, this will come back to bite us. But Jonathan David, you've seen him grow as a player, and everywhere he's gone, he's just excelled. And seeing him get comfortable in these types of situations without Davies there, man, it really gets exciting to see what can this team do when it's fully healthy, right? And you add in some of that depth that gets interesting. I mean, we didn't say Liam Miller today, which I think a match against maybe the U.S. might suit him. But honestly, this squad, they play well. But Jonathan, Jonathan David, un joueur exceptionnel, an exceptional player. 
I am excited to see what they're able to do next. But that's all for Canada. Let's quickly go around CONCACAF. Jamaica went down a man uh, because Damian Lowe had a, a rash tackle. Tell me if you heard that one before. But took the lead, Daniel Johnson, but gave up two goals in three minutes and just gave the game away. That's, that's a tough pill for the Jamaicans, which leaves them on life support. But, man, Jamaica needed a result against Mexico, and they weren't able to pull it through. But, yeah, Jamaica will be interesting as they move forward. They have a game against Panama coming up for match day 10, and it's basically life support if they need a win. If they don't get a win against Panama, they are done. They are done, basically. But if they can get a win against Panama, it opens it up for them. Panama, however, unable to stay up with the big three, lost to Costa Rica. Daniel Ruiz reminding everyone he may be old, but he still can score goals. Leaving them now two points behind Panama with a big matchup for Costa Rica against Mexico. And that gets very interesting there as well. And then the U.S. were able to put away El Salvador finally 1-0. Match day 10 is going to be interesting with big matchups against with Canada versus the U.S. You have Panama versus Jamaica, Honduras versus El Salvador. Always a good derby there. And then Mexico and Costa Rica. Man, the separation window. Big move. I know a college football term. Big move Saturday. Big move match 10 day is going to be interesting. I think if those middle teams... If you're in the top three, you need Panama to leave the pack a little bit more and get maybe like Jamaica thinking they're still alive and maybe leaving Costa Rica with a result making them think they're still alive because then you set up a matchup with Costa Rica and Jamaica for a match day 11. But that's a quick recap. Again, Canada, well done. But a quick look at the other matches. You guys let me know what you think. Um, who stood out to you in match day nine? What players do you think you need more from? And what are you expecting from your national programs? You go on, leave a comment. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe here. And guys, you enjoy this recap. Thank you for coming in. This is a question from the Africans saying bye-bye for now.